when Wendy Davis ran for governor, remember when she ran with the pink sneakers and she had done the filibuster on abortion? When she ran for governor, which was just six years ago, uh, she was making it clear that although she was a Democrat, uh, she was uh, perfectly fine uh, with uh, gun rights and um, open carry. You know, hey, I, this is Texas. I know it's important to you, and, and you don't have anything to worry about for me if I become governor. That was Wendy Davis six years ago. Now she's running for the House seat, and she's talking about how she's going to take on the gun lobby and take on the gun manufacturers, and we're going to go for it and go after it. And I think there's two things happening here, and I, I want to know what you think. I think there's two reasons why candidate, Democratic candidates in Texas are talking gun control in 2020. One reason is that Michael Bloomberg is in the Democratic race, and his money is driving that take on the gun lobby, take on the gun interests, take on the NRA, take on the manufacturers, change the laws so that victims of mass shootings can sue the, the maker of the gun. Bloomberg is changing the messaging. But there's an even bigger reason, I think, why Democrats in Texas like, um, and she's not the only one, like Wendy Davis and others, are sounding so anti-gun in a state that's where that doesn't seem to make sense. Virginia. Virginia was a state where people always thought uh, you know, Second Amendment rules, and uh, you don't go near it, and Virginia Democrats historically have towed a, a line and been careful. And then this last election last year in Virginia, they have off-year elections. The Democrats did very, very well and retook the state legislature with the promise to pass gun control bills, the most strict they've ever had, and they've passed a number of them, not all of them. They didn't do everything they said they would do, but they're trying. And Virginia is another one of those states where the demographics are changing, where the, 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 the traditional makeup of that voter is changing. The complexion of the population is changing. And it's changing here. Do you think we are at a point, I'm not that interested, to be honest, when people try to predict Will Texas be a blue state or a red state? I don't think anyone really knows. I don't think it will happen all at once. But could we have a tipping point election on guns? You know, you have a tremendous amount of money being spent by Bloomberg's group and every town and Mothers Against. There's a lot of celebrity money. There's almost no... For celebrity uh, giving, there's almost no running out. It's like an endless fountain of money. You go back and ask for more, you always get it if you say you'll run against guns. And, um, you know, you can tweak the language a little bit. You can say, well, we're not about gun confiscation. We're about gun safety. What do you think? I think Virginia has emboldened people like Wendy Davis to say, I'm going to try it. In Texas, where just six years ago, she wouldn't go anywhere near anything like that. You couldn't drag her into a position. You couldn't say, yeah, but what about Democrats in other states? She'd say, well, no, it's different here. I, I'm running here. We're different. We get it. We get the Second Amendment. That was six years ago. I don't think she changed. I'm not sure I believe that anything in her heart or her mind changed. I think they're getting daring. I think they're getting bold. I think they're, they're going to try it. They're going to try to run on the fear of guns, the fear of mass shootings, the idea that it's getting worse, there's more of them, it's out of control, the fear that the Republicans won't do anything, they, they're just, they won't do anything. You've got to put us in. And Virginia, they ran on the red flag thing. Wendy Davis is running on that. They ran on the, um, you know, better background checks thing. She's talking about that. They talked about uh, the, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? The 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 loopholes, the so-called loopholes. She's running on that. 210 599 5555. And I, I don't really think she can knock off Chip Roy, but I think it's interesting to see her transformation. And I think the only reason for it is that there's so much money and there's such a sense after the Virginia election that you can go into a, a state that's very strong on the Second Amendment and as that population changes with outsiders moving in, you can there's an opportunity to be seized. If you wait too long, you might miss it. But if you take it at the right moment, it could change the politics in that state. And Virginia has emboldened these Texas candidates like Wendy Davis and Gina Jones, 210-599-5555. Let's talk about that right now. We'll get your votes in on the Stevens Roofing JR poll on KTSA San Antonio. And Mark is on the radio. Mark, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking the call. Sure. There was a uh, Harvard Law Review study by two professors there that sought to do a historical perspective on weapons control and to prove that it actually does work. When they finished their research, going back into the Middle Ages, uh, the first weapon ever controlled was crossbows, that throughout history, they, they actually came up with the statistics and showed that it has never in history in any country at all has worked. Gun control does not work because, as their theory came out, the only people that follow the laws that are passed are law-abiding citizens the criminals will always get their hands on weapons, and all you did is created a, a target-rich environment for the criminals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember reading about that in the Harvard. Uh, I, I, you would almost imagine that these Harvard researchers had to report the last thing in the world they ever wanted to or expected to uh, report. You can imagine where their own political leanings probably lie. Um, I think you're right that, that gun control doesn't work as promised, I do think, Mark, gun control works very well for governments uh, because the other thing that history has taught us is that once you take away the element of personal ownership of or personal carriage of firearms, you make anything a government does, whether it's force, economics, uh, much easier to do. It's a much more placid, docile population uh, once that's gone. And um, it's interesting to me to kind of connect the dots here. Here we have uh, more and more messaging about socialism and collectivization. And, and although they won't say it, all those things require coercion. Remember when we got Obamacare, all of a sudden there was a mandate, there was a, a penalty for something that had never had a penalty attached to it before. And that's how socialism works. It has to hurt us, right, gently if possible, by force if necessary, but it has to herd us into behaviors uh, that we would not uh, choose on our own if we were free to choose. And I think there's a connection between wanting people to uh, be herdable and also to be dependent on the government for their safety, because as you disarm the population, you have to make more and more extravagant promises that you will keep schools safe and keep public places safe. So I don't think it, yeah, I don't think a thinking person falls for the gun control argument. But the gun control argument is very appealing from an emotional standpoint. And you go into a community that's had a mass shooting, and all of a sudden you've got a bunch of new people who think, I want somebody to do something, or I'm afraid now. I wasn't before, I didn't think it could happen, and now it's happened here, or it's happened to people like me. And, and, and so that's part of what I think the calculation is with Texas Democrats pushing the gun control uh, message and weighing how much of it they can mix in, where up until recently, if you were a Texas Democrat, you always had to quickly say, you had to short-circuit the whole gun discussion and go, well, uh, look, we're in Texas, and we believe in the Second Amendment, and don't worry, I'm not interested in coming after your guns or your right to conceal carry. I mean, that was, that was sort of the lip service the Democratic candidates always paid, and it's interesting to note some of the highest profile uh, Democrats aren't doing that. And it's also interesting to see Mike Bloomberg really counting on Texas. In other words, his strategy, I would say, is based to a large degree on doing very, very well here on March 3rd. 
And yet he is best known nationally of all the things we know about Mike Bloomberg. He is best known for being a gun control guy. So the Democrats must figure our population, our state is changing or there's no way they would be messaging that and making those kinds of uh, putting those kinds of uh, eggs in our basket. Esteban is on KTSA. Hi, Esteban. I beg to differ with you. Uh, there's a neighbor moved in, uh, does not have a Wendy Davis sign, has a sign for her opponent. And I know in New Braunfels, there's st- there's, the community's getting more riled up and more outsiders moving in and if these Oshlanders are ruining it. And Wendy Davis has an Oshlanders flying like, will fly like a ton of bricks. I'm sorry, she has what? Well, o- she, Oshlanders? Is that Oshlander, outsider. Oh, okay. I didn't know and, what that meant. And so, is that German? Yes. Oh. New Braunfels Come on, Esteban. You can't throw German at me. I'm just a guy on the radio here. So, Wendy Davis is going to have a hard time than she thinks. And as far as the whole gun control bit, these last two church shootings have been done by people who were who possessed a gun illegally. And well, you don't have to convince me of that. I, I I get that, but you can't tell me. In a place like New Braunfels or San Marcos or Cibolo, where the whole country has discovered that's the place to live, okay, where people are moving in all the time, you can't tell me that at least in the short term that isn't going to water down the traditional Texas hell no on the Second Amendment. You can't tell me it's not going to have an effect, Esteban. But New Braunfels is getting pissed off at all the outsiders, so you'll have a base rile up that normally would not have. And I'm not yeah, but what happens when there's more outsiders than insiders? It depends on who actually votes. Well, that's who true, but I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to count on something as flimsy as hoping that people that are moving into a new house won't, you know, get around to voting because that's that that is uh, that's a nice outcome. That would be great if that happened, but I wouldn't want to count on it. I I do think that. Um, Virginia and Texas have some differences, and I think Virginia probably was not as strong on the Second Amendment as Texas was. So the, 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 the I guess you'd say the conversion of Virginia politically uh, was one thing, and the conversion of Texas on the Second Amendment would be something else. But it is, if you watch, you're seeing political campaigns and political candidates talk about guns in Texas in a way that would have been unthinkable, really, I would say, just like four years ago or six years ago.